the board have any questions for this witness? Do we have any questions from the public for this witness? Is, is this your only witness tonight? Okay. Um, from our board professionals, you want to just any concerns, highlights from your reports? No, just basically, it's a permitted use. They're reducing the size of the building, and the capacity is going to remain the same. So there's no intensity of increase of the use. They're making it, I think, more attractive, and the parking is being reduced too. The parking requirements being reduced. So I, I don't have any concerns at all with it. Bennett, um, I don't really have any concerns with it. Uh, I will say, for the the board's uh, education, I'm sure you're w aware of this just by looking at it. But they have no parking on site. Mm -hmm. All of their parking is off uh, is is um, on the street, uh, yeah. off site parking. Um, so actually, and it's, there's and a it's there is a parking lot that has like 26 spaces in it. That, yeah. I, yeah, yeah, you're correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the site is operated like that for a number of years, uh, and and it is there's no change as was testified. There's no change in the maximum occupancy, the number of people expected to be there. So I don't have any con uh, issue with it. Any questions from the board for our professionals? Hearing none. Any any questions from the public for our professionals? Okay. All right. Do I have a motion to close the public <laughs> hearing on this case? I make a motion to close. I'll second. Mr. Beal. Roll call, please. You can do an all in favor to close the public. All close in favor. Public. Aye. 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 All right. Uh, then someone want to make a motion to make a positive or a negative resolution on this? I'll move for a positive resolution. I'll second. All right, roll call. Adelia? Yes. Kathleen? Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. 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 Okay, great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. You. Appreciate it. All right, our next case of the evening. Ms. Diane Gradone, 608 Wildwood Road, West Allenhurst, Block 61.07, Lot 4, Zone R4. Hello, Ms. Krimko. How are you? Good. Members of the board, Jennifer Krimko from Anselm Grimman Aaron here on behalf of the applicant. What we have before you tonight is a significantly oversized lot in the R4 zone. Unfortunately, it's not exactly two times the lot size, which is why we're coming in uh, for variance relief related to uh, creating two lots. There's an existing house on the lot, obviously, as any condition of a subdivision should the board approve it we would have to remove that house in order to make way. We are not proposing any construction right now with exception to that construction that's necessary as part of your subdivision ordinance. What I mean by that is, is that sidewalks are required, street trees are required, uh, and general uh, infrastructure improvements like that, but no uh, homes are being proposed. We're merely looking to create two building lots. As you're going to see through the testimony from our engineer and planner, uh, we're going to be introducing an exhibit that shows how two conforming homes can easily fit on this lot and be well under the uh, required coverages and the like. Uh, additionally, we will show you the makeup of the uh, character of that portion of the R4 zone, which is immediately abuts the R5 zone, in which this lot would be completely compliant. That's the overview. Okay. If I can just, uh, for the record, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to mark in the following exhibits. Exhibit A1 will be the application. Exhibit A2 will be the boundary and topographic survey. Exhibit A3 will be the minor subdivision plan. Those are all the exhibits I have at the moment. 
Then I have for the board exhibits, exhibit B1 will be the board planner report, exhibit B2 will be the board engineer report, exhibit B3 will be the crime prevention report, exhibit B4 will be the traffic safety report, exhibit B5 will be the code enforcement report, exhibit B6 will be the environmental commission report, exhibit B7 will be the fire marshal report, and exhibit B8 will be the Department of Public Works report. And, and I'm sorry, Mark, That's I, okay. I missed B4. B4 is the traffic safety report. Thank you. You want to have your first witness yes. go, and then we'll go to our professionals? I would, and I, and I actually have two more exhibits, if I could just move them sure. really quickly. Uh, A4 is a neighborhood aerial exhibit prepared by Insight Engineering, dated June 24, 2024. And then A5 is as promised. It's entitled Potential Conforming Development Exhibit. That's also by Insight, and that's dated 620, excuse me, 620-24. And as you're going to see, it very carefully notes on these potential conforming structure, potential conforming driveway, because again, we're not proposing any of this construction. We just want to let you know that should the board vote favorably on this what size homes and other improvements would fit without variance relief. We will, I will see once we hand it out to the board. You'll hear through the testimony what the size is. So with that, I'd like to introduce Patrick Ward. He's running away. <laughs> no, he's not running away. He's just getting more copies for the public. Have him sworn and qualified as a professional engineer and planner. Mr. Ward, do you swear your testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, self you got? I do. And just state your name and spell your last name for the record? Sure. Patrick Ward, W A R D. And you are licensed. Uh, uh, are you testifying in both capacities or only as an engineer tonight? Uh, engineer and planner. Uh, all right. So you're, you were both a licensed planner and engineer this evening? That's correct. Thank you very much. We, we'll accept you. Thank you. All right, please. All right, Patrick, as the expert here and the preparer of the plans, why don't you take it away, talk about what's existing on the site and what we're proposing, first from an engineering perspective, and then we'll get into the planning support for the variance relief required. Sure. What I'll do is I'm going to start with A2, which I believe is the survey, Ms. Krimko, um, and I want to turn it so the public can see as well in case. So the subject property is 608 Wildwood Road, right, block 61.07, lot 4, and we're in the R4 zone, as Ms. Krimko stated. So the applicant's here tonight to subdivide the subject property into two new lots, L proposed lot 4.01 and 4.02. And as you'll see and as you'll hear, the proposed lots are slightly under the minimum lot area and width requirement for the R4 zone, necessitating variance relief before this board. So today, and this is the survey that was marked and submitted as part of the package, there's a, a single family dwelling on the property, roughly centrally located, not much else going on, some open space around the perimeter and driveway and walkway to the front. So what we're proposing to do is subdivide this property in half. So the property today is 150 feet wide and 125 feet deep. We're looking to split it in half to have two 75-foot wide lots. The existing dwelling and the other site improvements, the driveway, walkways, and patio at the rear, would be removed as part of this application. The proposed lot areas are each 9,375 square feet, where 10,000 square feet is the minimum requirement. And the proposed lot widths are 75 feet wide, where 90 feet is required. Notably, the lot depth here is 25 feet in excess of what's required in the R4 zone. I'll get to, into this in a little more detail in a moment, but we are immediately adjacent to the R5 zone, um, right next door to us on, on our one uh, property boundary Why side. Why don't you put up uh, A4 just to support the public visual? Sure. So this is A4, our neighborhood exhibit. And what you can see here, subject property is in blue in our proposed two lots, and the orange line represents the boundary between R4 and R5. And what you can see, which is not uncommon, but not the norm is that the 
zone boundary cuts mid block. So we're actually we're not we're in the not at the end of the block. We're in the middle of the block, and our east property line is actually the zone boundary to the R4 or to the R5, I should say. And additionally, as this exhibit shows, there are R4 zone lots in our vicinity that actually don't meet the R4 requirements, and we have those highlighted in yellow. Um, and you can see those, and, and some of them are actually smaller than what we are proposing tonight. And again, Patrick, mm -hmm. and we're going to get into it and when we get to the planning testimony. That's not to justify the variance. That's to show towards what the character of the neighborhood is. Correct. Because that's part of the proofs we have to demonstrate. The goal here is to show that we're not disrupting neighborhood character and we're more in fitting with the neighborhood character, which we'll get into more in a moment. Ms. Kripko stated that no construction is proposed at this time as in no new homes are being proposed at this moment. What we are proposing, and it's on our subdivision plan set, is that we're proposing new curb along the frontage and new sidewalk where it doesn't exist today. Um, and we're also proposing three street trees, which is required by township ordinance. No trees uh, on the site are to be removed at this moment, at right this time. Now we did prepare, and this is a five, a f this future future improvements exhibit, and I'll move my aerial back so that you can see what I'm going to do. And so we prepared this and we studied the, the proposed lots to see what could be developed uh, on the property and how would it compare to the zoning requirements of the R4 zone. So we studied each lot and what you see here are potential conforming developments proposed future houses, future driveways potentially. And we show that we can offer or we can demonstrate conforming improvements um, and we can show that each property could be developed with a new home, about 1,950 square feet in footprint, uh, a driveway uh, or gar and garage for off-street parking and potential rear amenity space. These footprints and these potential future homes will be comparable to other houses in the neighborhood in terms of size and scale. Um, in contrast, if we kept the lot today as it is, which is oversized by nearly twice, a full build-out development of the subject property today up to the maximum uh, ordinance requirements would be out of character with the neighborhood. You're looking at a much larger house than what's in the immediate vicinity and a lot more uh, in terms of amenity space improvements, driveways, etc. This exhibit, just for point of reference, shows a proposed lot coverage of about 30% for each lot. And as we know, the R4 zone permits 65%. So this is just you know, the, the start of it. Um, there's more that could be added in the rear yards, for example. We want to demonstrate to the board that homes of, in character with the neighborhood could be built, and there's room in the backyard for your typical amenities. Right. Space. So importantly, it's just to show that at the building coverage, you're going to have about a 2,000 square foot first floor, which would translate into roughly a 4,000 square foot house as opposed to one big McMansion at 8,000 square feet on the right. bigger lot. It's the easiest way to say it is to, it could potentially be double the size of these, yes. Um, this exhibit shows that future development of the parcels will comply with all the bulk work standards of the R4 zone. <coughs> and um, just for future development purposes, we do have letters of future service from all the utility purveyors that says that they can serve two homes on this property without issue. And did you look at whether or not this lot, the, topo the topography, that some future development could actually be accommodated here without any negative drainage impact on any of the surrounding neighborhoods. We did, and this, this exhibit does show proposed grading in a co conceptual form, and we, we can indicate that um, the, the new roof runoff could be directed towards Wildwood, uh, the right-of-way, rather than neighbors or to the rear. And by developing it as two separate homes as opposed to one large home with many amenities, we're not getting the benefit of any more coverage it would still be compliant. It's no more impervious than we would be allowed if we kept it as one lot. That is correct. Okay. We're just giving more light, air, and open space by having two structures instead of one large one. Correct. Okay. And so that's just an overview of the site and the subdivision. What I'd like to get into is, again, reiteration of the variances and, and the support for the positive and negative criteria for those variants. Uh, well, you, just you're going to move on to the, the planning yes. portion of your testimony. Before we do that, can we hear from our board engineer any concerns on the Absolutely. engineering half first? Sure. Uh, my only comment is uh, that wasn't touched on was um, the 
demolition of the existing structure. The proposed subdivision line goes right through the uh, existing building. So the demolition would have to take place before the subdivision is um, perfected. That's understood, Mr. Chair. Okay. If you want to continue your testimony then. Sure. So as I mentioned at the beginning, we have lot area variance, a lot area variance for each lot, and we have a lot width variance for each lot. And in my opinion, these can be analyzed as flexible C2 variances. So in my review of this application from a planning perspective, I reviewed two cases whose decisions support this application. So we have the Kaufman case, which is a, it's a pretty famous case for the C2 criteria. And then there's another one, Green Meadows v. the Montville Planning Board. So first, the Kaufman, the court ruled that the creation of two comparable homes were a better zoning alternative than one large dwelling on an oversized lot. The ruling focused on, quote, more harmonious lot sizes, end quote, outweighing any detriment created which furthers the purpose of planning, which I'll, I'll summarize in a moment. In the Green Meadows case, there were similar findings. And again, they said the same, the notion of, quote, more harmonious lot sizes, end quote, was seen as substantially outweighing any detriments of the case. A neighborhood context here is critical, and we look at A4, the exhibit. As I said before, our property is on the border of the R4, R5 zoning districts. Our lot width of 75 feet and our lot area of 9,375 square feet would exceed the R5 zoning requirements just next door. What is that requirement? Excuse me? What is that requirement in R5? What's the minimum? R5 is, um, well, I have, it's uh, 75, 75 feet wide or? and it's 7,500 square foot lots. So as you look to the, in the immediate neighborhood too, there are several lots that are similar sized to our proposed lots. Just to the west of us, there are two lots that are very similarly sized. And then across the street, there's actually a really, really small lot. And then a little bit to the north at the corner of Woodland and Deal Parkway, there are two lots that are a hair smaller than what we're proposing. This section of our neighborhood appears to serve as a transition from the R5 zone to the R4 zone. Um, keep in mind that in actuality, zoning district boundaries are not visible in real life. So even though the zoning district split is mid-block, as you can see, the neighborhood harmony continues as you go you cross Deal Parkway or head north and south. All said, this application furthers the following purposes of planning. A, this is an appropriate uh, development which will promote the general welfare. In my opinion, this is a better utilization of land here that protects the general welfare. The lot area devi deviation is imperceptible. Um, it's small. This application, uh, C, purpose C, excuse me, this application provides l adequate light air and open space. And this is really why we prepared this potential conforming development plan is that light air and open space will be protected in the future because no bulk variance relief would be necessary for full development here with the R R4 district standards. Purpose E, to promote the establishment of appropriate population densities and preservation of the environment. This application is considered to have an appropriate density since it more closely confor conforms to the zone plan, which is the intended density of the R4 zone, more closer to that than having a single oversized lot. And this is essentially an infill development, which is a good strategy for providing housing while preserving the environment. Purpose I, this application promotes a desirable visual environment. And purpose N, leads to a more efficient use of land. I think those are tied together in that, again, more infill development and efficient use of land, not sprawl. Purpose G, this application provides sufficient space and appropriate locations for residential uses in order to meet the needs of all New Jersey citizens. Again, infill development is a good strategy to provide housing for New Jersey citizens. And this application will conserve property values in the neighborhood. In my opinion, this development will blend nicely with the neighborhood. As noted in the two cases I started with, we will have, lot, we have more harmonious lot sizes and future dwellings, which is a basis for a granting of the C2 variance in this case. So uh, just to interrupt you for one second, mm -hmm. Pat. The, in the C2, you have to demonstrate that you're furthering the purposes of the municipal land use law and essentially show that what we're proposing is a better zoning alternative than conformity. So are you saying that more harmonious size homes in the surrounding neighborhood is a better zoning alternative than a large home that would stick out more? That's exactly right. And when I close on this, the negative criteria, I'll, I'll reiterate that in another way. That yes, what we're proposing here is a better zoning alternative for this lot than a single lot and a single home. Just to summarize, purposes A, D, G, I, and M are promoted here. 
Now for the negative criteria, single family residential is a permitted use as we know in the R4 zone. And as I mentioned earlier, this proposed subdivision improves the neighborhood harmony and is more fitting with the intended density of the R4 zone and the R5 zone immediately next door. The subdivision prevents an pre presents an opportunity to improve the utilization of the property without sacrificing the neighborhood character or creating a potential bulk variance condition in the future. To follow the logic of the cases I mentioned earlier, this application is a better planning alternative for the property. Visually, the future dwellings will be on scale with the homes in the vicinity. The new lots more closely follow the density intended for the R4 zone. And the lot area var variances will not be visible to anyone. Future development will fit right in with the existing neighborhood. And, and Pat, just to clarify, when you say that the density is more appropriate, we're closer to the R4 lot area requirement in the proposed condition than we are in the existing condition. Yes, this solution or this proposal is closer to the R4 intended density than the single lot, which and, is nearly right, twice the I, size. Right, and I just wanted to clarify for the board when you're talking about the intended density, you mean the lot area? Correct. That's that's what dwelling. I mean by right. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's what's it's what's contemplated when they create the lot areas for each zone. Again, we look at the neighborhood exhibit, the existing homes, the lot sizes in the proximity to the R4 zone, these, lo these lots would comply in the R5 zone. Remember the neighborhood is a, that the neighborhood is a neighborhood. No one can physically see the zone boundary lines in real life. Our goal here is to not disrupt the harmony of the neighborhood, and I feel this application improves that harmony. To summarize, the proposed development would not cause substantial detriment to the public good, nor substantially impair the intent and purpose of the zone plan. As I said earlier, there's case law that essentially supports this application. And on balance, it's my opinion that the benefits of the application substantially outweigh its detriments, giving the board the ability to approve this application with confidence. And that will close my direct. All right, so we'll hear from Mr. Higgins, then we'll take questions from the board, then we'll take questions from the public. So, Mr. Higgins. Basically, I agree with the testimony. I'll throw a few more things in so the board can put it in perspective. You have a lot that's 18,750 square feet. If somebody wanted to max out the building coverage on that lot, which is happening more and more, people want to build bigger bigger homes, that home could stretch across the lot 125 feet from one end of the home to the other with 12 and a half feet on each side of the home. You'd have 25, uh, 25 feet combined side yard setback requirement in the R4 zone. As proposed here, you would have two lots with smaller homes, and each of those lots would have to have the combined 25-foot side yard setbacks. So in terms of light air and open space, you'd have twice the open space to look through the lots as you would if somebody were to build a maximum lot house on the larger lot, and it would be completely out of character with the area. So basically, I agree with the, the planner's testimony. And in fact, I have made that same argument in other communities for similar applications. And when you look at the <coughs> fact that there are the two lots on one side of this site are 7,500 square foot lots, and on the other side are uh, the same size as what's being proposed, it's, it just makes sense. It's, it's a transitional area. So I, I don't have a big problem at all with this. And, and anything else? No, no. All right, members of the board, do we have questions for our, our witness here? How are you? Good. Um, I see you have a soil boring location on both lots. <coughs> did you not want to disclose the results of them, or do you, they're not in evidence, so I didn't know if you recalled what the water table was <coughs> on um, Wildwood? Yeah, sure, happy to share. Um, groundwater was relatively shallow, so these will likely be crawl spaces. Um, just to comply with the ordinance requirements for story above grade and all that. And Ms. Sermont, just to address that, it was not for a lack of disclosure why we didn't share it. Originally, when this application started, we were actually constructing two single family homes. So the plan was prepared that way and the soil boring was done to make sure that it could support it. It was only once we made the application that we realized that my client didn't want to construct the homes, would have preferred to just create the building lots. We had the information, we left that on. But should this be approved uh, and should someone construct homes on it, they'd be required to submit those soil borings and a grading and drainage review that would be re reviewed by the township engineer. A good catch. 
if the minimum amount, or if it's supposed to be 10,000 square feet, is that the intended amount on R4? Why was this one created? Do we know why a 19,000 square foot plot was created? We can't answer that. It, it pre-existed the zoning, I think, when you look at the character of the area. And, and that's the other thing. It is, it's probably the largest lot in this, this part of the township, within at least within three or four blocks. Can I go? No, of course. <laughs> You kept referring to you're not going to build houses on it. So the plan is you're looking for approval. You want to tear down the home, subdivide it. Is that when you're going to build the trees then, or plant the trees and put new sidewalks in? Or no, I you kept on. I'm you're all over the place with it. So I, can, I can answer that. Break so it down. In order to subdivide the property before we get our performance bond release, we would have to put in the sidewalks, put in the trees. That's something that would be done on the vacant lots. What we're saying by way of construction is we're not proposing to construct homes. So we would sell the lots to someone who would want to live there and build a home, and they would already have the sidewalks curving and trees installed. Should they then want to remove any trees as part of any construction, they'd be subject to your tree removal ordinance the same way every homeowner is, and that would go towards, towards Ben. So when I said, I had indicated that we're not proposing any construction of homes or improvements with the exception of that which is required by your subdivision ordinance, which is the infrastructure improvements, the street trees, the curb, and the sidewalk. That would all be constructed before my client would be released from the Because there's no curbing now, there's no right. sidewalks, there's no driveway would, cutouts. Right. You so have, would have to put all of that in. And I would and recommend right. that a condition of approval be that they cannot get a building permit until they have complied with the tree replacement requirements of the ordinance that's in place at the time. So the, the homes that you have, you know, I think you gave us a copy of it too, I can't read it. Are they 4,000 square foot homes that are on those drawings there? The ground floor is just over nine, 19,000 with, there's a garage. 1,900. <laughs> 1,900, sorry. Um, those are generic rectangles. There's no plans. This was just to show the board what the size of home that could be built here would look like. But that's just so, that's so you're only saying it's going to be like a ranch or something for that picture right there. No. We, no? We had indicated that that's what it looks like. So it could be a two and a half story home. Okay. With a 1,900 square foot. We didn't design the home. It could be a ranch. It could be a two and a half mm -hmm. story. It could be a smaller footprint. It probably can't be a bigger footprint and still meet the requirements. So that is for one level, 1,900 square feet. Correct. And the current home is 1,900 square feet now. I don't have that information, but if that's tax record says that is. And the lots that you're referencing, I think lots six and seven, I'm sorry, five and six, they're 1,821 square feet. So what? You know, potentially a 4,000 square foot home be out of character then? No. I mean, you kept saying it. I'm, I'm asking. Because yeah. you, could add a sec you could add a second story. Right. Well, actually, a two and a half story. So, as you know, and I know you've been a long time Ocean Township resident, um, each of these older neighborhoods that were all created before the uh, ordinance was adopted are essentially turning over by way of improvements where the homes are starting to be fixed up and you see a lot of the ranches are becoming two story, two and a half, now two and a half story, yeah. now that the ordinance allows. So the fact that there is an 1,800 square foot or a 1,900 square foot footprint on there today is not legally what the board is to look at. The board is- He, I, he, he, he opened the door. He I, kept asking, he I, kept I'm, saying it. I, I understand that, and if I, if I may. So it, it's not legally what the board is supposed to consider what the board is supposed to consider is the types of homes that are order, be Mr. Chair. He, he opened it up. I'm just trying to ask him if it's, if, you know, the picture was 2,000 square foot. Just ask it. I, I think that the witnesses represented that they are, are looking to this, and correct me if I'm wrong, what they've shown is what the setbacks would look like, not necessarily the square footage of the home to be constructed. Is that correct? It's the setbacks in a representative building coverage. Right, and, and they would have to conform. Well, I, I mean, a, a future builder could come back and ask for a variance, but they would have to conform to the existing standards, which we modified last year to be yeah. two and a half stories. So they 
under our ordinance, they could build a two and a half story home, but they're not, not debating, representing building. Not debating anything. that at all. Just right. asking. Yeah, 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 they could come in right now, tomorrow, demolish that house, build a house that had a footprint of 4,600 square feet and could be two and a half stories high, which would be very much out of character with the area. And, and Ms. Krimko's right. When, when planners look at the character of the area, you don't just look at what's there, you look at what the zoning could permit in the future because that's really what establishes the character of the area. When but the question is to split it up. The question isn't to put a McMansion or anything on it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Correct? Yeah. yeah. May I ask a follow-up question to my planner? I sure. I think it'll help uh, clarify. <laughs> yes, clarify is a good word. Patrick, when you said that the house, that the house we're proposing would be more in conformity, that is based on what could be built on a... 10,000 square foot lot in this district, correct? Yes, within the R4 zone, yes. So you're not saying that it's consistent in size with all of the houses in the neighborhood. What you're saying is is that if this, if this lot remains almost double the size, then this property could have a home almost double the size of any of the other homes, and that would be out of, assuming everybody built out to their max capacity, which unfortunately it likely may happen at some time between now and the next hundred years the home that could be built on here would be extremely out of character correct yeah we're talking about neighborhood harmony and, and rhythm and mr higgins said a really good point about the spacing of the homes and what your setbacks look like in light air and open space and a made one large home eats up light air and open space that you would have with something like this right so. and, and when you talk about the harmony of the neighborhood you mean as is contemplated by your ordinance based on the full build-up? Potential development of, Not yes. necessarily the homes that are there. Correct. And then just to follow up on what Jim had indicated, um, while we're not proposing to build a 9,000 or 9,500 square foot home on the lot, if this subdivision were not approved, someone could purchase this lot and max out the building coverage. I think that's the point you're trying to make, correct? That's correct. And yes. in your opinion, if we have two 4,000 square foot homes on these two lots, is that more in keeping with what the zoning contemplates than a nine or 10,000 square foot home in this neighborhood? That is correct. Thank it's you. more in keeping. Mr. Pelutis, does that answer your question? It, it, it helps. W would you like to refine the question? <laughs> I'm fine for right now. Okay. I'll reserve my time for later. All right. Any other questions from the board at this time? Seeing none, Ms. Krumko, you don't have any other witnesses this evening. All right, we will open it up to the public for questions. You can come up, please state your name and your address and ask any questions and that you may have. In, and our board attorney will be swearing you in. Okay, do you swear in testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, only about the truth, Selfie God? I do. And just state your name for the record. Patricia Petko Weaver. Could you spell the last name, please? W-E-A-V-E-R. And could you please take a half step closer to the microphone? Sure. Thank you. <clears throat> and your address, please? Um, I have two addresses. Um, one, I'm living with my mom um, occasionally, and she is at 617 Palmer Avenue, which is directly behind 608. And I also have a home in Pittsburgh, 111 Riding Trail Lane, Pittsburgh. We don't, we don't need that one. We'll okay. But six, I'm speaking on behalf of my family, which has owned the house for um, 65 years. Um, All right. So, so, so just so you know, and, and you can't represent your family. You only can represent yourself. Okay. I'll represent myself. Um, our families, well, I am requesting specific performance that no exception be granted to the Gradones to split lot four, block 61.07, located at 608 Wildwood Road. In 1959, my parents purchased the property directly behind the aforementioned property at 617 yeah, Palmer yeah, Avenue. Hold, hold on. <laughs> so, so Ms. Weaver and Ms. Krimko, you have no other witnesses. Okay. To, to just, just, just let her give her uh, statement. That's statement. fine. I just wanted yeah. to clarify that the public is now open for comment instead of just. Yes. Yeah. My, my apologies for not making that clear. Please continue. Okay. And that residence has been my parents' primary residence for years. I grew up there. I went to Ocean Township. Um, the reasons they purchased, in addition to the excellent school district for their many children, 
the privacy afforded by a larger lot, which was sandwiched between two very similarly sized lots, the Cravinos, which, well, 608 behind it, and the property right in front of it, and I believe our property at 617 is about the same size, at least the same width as 608. Uh, they built out their house. It, it is a, a larger house, which um, is probably in width, uh, comes within maybe 20 feet on either side of the other side. So when you discuss have the neighborhood, we have a, my parents have a very large house to accommodate five kids. Um, they enjoyed the park-like fields sur uh, feel sur surrounding the lot and the properties quiet with mature trees, gardens, and an abundance of wildlife. Um, and particularly the many species of birds that my mom likes to listen to that inhabit the property that awaken her in the morning. And um, my parents have relied on the integrity of the township that is a community of gracious living um, in keeping the existing zoning for the property because they think gr gracious living is nice lots with lots of playroom. <coughs> Um, 617 is my mom's greatest joy and her a and greatest asset. On warm days, you'll find her outside sitting on the patio that my father built under the comfortable shade of the large oak trees and the peace and quiet of her oasis, reading, watching wildlife, listening to birds, or talking on the phones. Uh, while there may be smaller lots nearby, they were zoned that way when my parents purchased 617. And six o um, if 608 were two lots, what would happen? Um, they probably would have looked elsewhere bec um, and not moved there. Uh, we ask you to reject it um, for the reasons, uh, the following reasons. I think there are flood issues in w Allenhurst and there is an issue with the Deal Lake watershed that's also stressed and it could worsen it by having more people there. It'll upset the wildlife ecosystem, my family home. It'll lessen the value of our family home. Smaller lots uh, mean that you can build more affordable housing, thus diminishing the value of adjacent homes. Um, the older, smaller homes in our neighborhood were grandfathered into the development, and the zoning laws were established to provide stability to the neighborhood and an assurance to the residents that they could rely upon those zones staying that way. And while the Gradones may desire to split their property, that decision shouldn't be granted at the expense of uh, my mother's specific enjoyment and our family home. Um, the Gradones knew the zoning laws when they purchased their property, and um, I'm surprised to see that they would even be interested in splitting it at this time. Um, if I were to ask all of you here, given the choice, if you were to answer me honestly, would you prefer a nice, in your backyard, two houses squeezed together and encroaching or upsetting your o oasis, or one house comfortably situated on a lot that's a nice sized lot. It's not a significantly oversized lot. I think that's an exaggeration for the, the size of my mother's and Mr. N608. Um, and while I think the common man would say, keep it as it is, we don't need two houses behind us. The Grunt Dones are welcome to develop real estate, but elsewhere, not in our backyard. We really are upset about it. And if you look at New Jersey case law in Medici versus BPR Company um, in 1987, it's 101 NJ 1, 1987, the court reaffirmed the holdings of Cole versus Mayor of Fairlawn, which was 50 NJ 265, 1967, that if the use for which a variance is sought. On the record. The Medici case is a use variance case. It's not a bulk variance case. It's wholly inapplicable here. I believe that Jim and no, I, I, I would agree. I would agree with that. Medici no. is not relevant to this conversation because it does say that it must find but, that the the use. Weaver, Mrs. Weaver, th this, this isn't a use case. Okay. All right. So, well, so we that's can't be, fine. I don't want to mislead the okay, board well, into let's arguing. Look. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. I don't want to mislead the board into thinking that this is a use argument. It's okay. not a use argument. The house is permitted. Mm -hmm. So that's why Medici is not not relevant. Okay. And we all know Medici. And believe me, we know Medici. Okay. I live Medici. Okay. This is not Medici. Okay. All right. It's not relevant. Well, maybe um, a closer look at the master plan for Ocean Township, written in 2023, and I'm sure you've read it cover to cover multiple times and are very familiar with it. Um, the master plan. Um, say, states that master plans must be designed to allow for reasonable modifications in land use. 
This is doubling the, uh, this, the number of houses, the density. To, that, to me, is not a reasonable modification. I'm thinking you're, you're talking about modifications like the previous case where they wanted to update their space so it looked nice. And the master plan also says the most future development in the township will involve infill development. And this request is not infill development, but it's about removing an existing house and splitting the lot down the middle to double the number of houses in a neighborhood that has large lots like that. The one across the street is uh, at least my, uh, the size of ours. Um, and then the purpose of your master plan from two th 2023, point number one is to pr promote the c conservation of historic sites and districts, and that would be West Allenhurst. Most of the houses in West Allenhurst are over 65 years old, and um, the general term for historic houses is 50 years. Um, the objective in your master plan says, point one is to recognize existing development patterns in the township are largely established and ensure the future development does not conflict with those existing development so, patterns. So Ms. Weaver, again, I just have to, again, interject. The board cannot deny the application based upon a perceived preserving the historic nature of a house okay. that exists on the site. Okay. They're, they're not legally allowed to do that. It's okay. not. It's not. A, it's not a historically designated house, so so they can't conceive of that. And if the board was to deny the application based upon we want to preserve the historic house that's there. This mm -hmm. would be re this would be reversed in half a second in freehold. Okay, but there are other points too, and I don't mind you objecting to one or two points. I, but I'm not, I'm not objecting. I'm just what I'm what I'm. What, what I'm trying to do is preserve the record. Okay. And so if you say something that is completely contrary to the law, I have to advise the board that they cannot do what you're asking them to do because it's contrary to the law. It is, this, all the houses are, would be historic what, but not historically I, I, again, significant. Again, again, what I'm trying to say is you're arguing they should preserve this house because it's historical. What I'm telling you is legally, if this board was to deny this application and they said, we want to preserve that house, we agree with Ms. Weaver. The judges in Freehold would overturn that decision okay. in half a heartbeat because it's not, it would be illegal for the board to do that. They do not have that right. Okay. Well, I, um, I appreciate your comment, but the objective of the master plan is to recognize existing development patterns in the township are largely established and ensure that future developments do not conflict with those existing development patterns. And the smaller house were pre-existing and grandfather and uh, the division at 608 conflicts uh, um, to divide it would conflict with our property and the property right behind it. So I do see that there is a pattern there. Um, so in compliance, um, you know, and just in reference to the master plan, which, um, it, well, your master plan and, and the implicit covenant of um, peaceful enjoyment granted to my parents when they bought a house with existing zoning on the per in, in 1959, I respectfully request that the Township of Ocean adhere to existing zoning for Lot 4, Block 6107, that we have relied on since 1959. <coughs> and there has been tremendous disharmony created by the Bredones raising the issue of further dividing our peaceful neighborhood with lots of green space. I submit, can I ask you, Ms. Weaver, which lot are you? Uh, are, you are you lot, are you lot 11? Yes. Okay, that's what I said. <coughs> I have some questions for this witness. You're entitled to go Thank ahead. you. Uh, you indicated that your parents' lot was the same size. I'm looking at the tax map, and it's showing that lot 11 and block 6107 is actually only 100 feet in width. Are you suggesting that the lot is larger than that? I haven't gone out and measured it. It's they pretty much they've been adjoining. Can I, can I have you? Can I have you look at this then? Sure. Well, while we're doing that, I have a quick question for Mr. Higgins. Mr. Higgins, can you please remind me what year we established our zoning code in Ocean? The original zoning the, code under the the, uh, the R four. I think it was in the nineteen fifties. Okay, thank you. That, but I, that, I'm guessing at that. I don't know for sure. I'm, I'm referencing, Mr. Around Chair, around. the tax map dated February 21st, 2003. Our lot is on Wildwood, and it's lot four. You indicated your parents' lot is immediately behind us, so that would be lot 11. Um, wait a second. That's our lot? Yes. So, okay, so. Ms. Krimko, can you work off the aerial, perhaps, because that might be easier for Ms. Weaver? Sure. Yeah. This is Ms. Weaver, why don't you come around and take a look? 
That's your lot, lot 11. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to put on the record for the board's big notice, lot 11 is 100 feet wide, uh, where our, proposed, our lot is 150 feet lot wide. So it, uh, this isn't a, this is just questions. Microphone. This is not a conversation between us. I'm allowed to ask her questions and just have her answer the questions. It's sure. it's it's a neighborhood where the, there I really are okay, offenses. Ms. Ma, ma, just question. She, Ms. Krimko is asking a question. If you could respond to her question. So just just so you understand, this is like this is a court. It, I mean, think of this as a court where you're now on the stand. You you gave your statement. Mm -hmm. So now it's her opportunity to cross examine. Okay. You. So, right. so you can't just interject. You have to let her do. I'm that. sorry. I'm not an attorney. I, I, I know you're not. So, so that's why I'm. That's why I'm explaining it to you how it works. Okay. So just for the record, lot 11 is not the same size as our lot. Lot 11 is 100 feet by 125. And Miss Weaver, you had indicated that this subdivision will disrupt the park-like setting that your parents have enjoyed mm -hmm. behind you. Were you here for the testimony offered by? Uh, Mr. Higgins, that a 125 foot wide house could be built here with only 25 feet on each side, creating sure. essentially a solid wall. Did you hear that? Yes, and I guess I'm, I'm, I haven't really visualized that. Okay, so if you can, if you can allow me, what we're proposing on this exhibit that was moved in are two separate houses, which provides setbacks on both sides. Ten. 25 feet of setback on both sides, 10 feet and 15, 10 feet and 15. What was being proposed is that if the lot is not subdivided, that's not a guarantee that the single family home that's been there stays, someone could come, purchase it, and fill all of that in have one giant home across it. So in your opinion, does that, and while I hear from your friend in the audience that that's not guaranteed either, that is what the zoning allows. So in your opinion, which is less park-like in your opinion? A lot that's filled entirely with building or one that has the voids and allows the light air and open space? That's a loaded question um, in that there, there, are two, there are two factors here. Number one, park light, it would probably be the, it would probably be the same because there's also noise coming from two houses versus from one house. Second thing is, it, it, what you're proposing with two houses depreciates the value of my mother's house. If it was a large um, mansion there, it would improve the value of her are, house. Are you a realtor, Mrs. Weaver? Not a realtor, but I studied realty at Harvard Business School. So uh, again, uh, you're not testifying as expert in the field of real estate, are you? No, because it varies from market to market, but I, I can tell you I have studied it. Okay, understood. And I think that members of the board are also familiar with real estate. And respectfully, I would just say that that's a personal opinion. It's not an expert testimony with regard to the value. Uh, so. Do you have any additional questions, Ms. Grimko? Oh, uh, you'd indicated that this is not infill development. Uh, could you explain then what would be infill development? Infill de development, in my opinion, and once again, I'm not an attorney, would be you leave the house there, but it has a big you know, lot next to it that's an extra lot. You just put another house on the other lot. This is tearing down an existing home um, and making two distinct um, pieces of property out of, but it's it's more aggressive than just plain old infill. There's a vacant lot, let's put a house on it. Uh, Mr. Higgins, as our, our board planner, can you please share the definition of infill development for us since there seems to be infill disagreement? Infill development is a little bit more than just finding a single lot and filling it in. Infill development is when you try and create lots within an established area that are consistent with the character of that area. So it could involve a subdivision. That's the only questions I have, Mr. Chair. Okay. Do you have other members from the public who want to come up and ask questions or make a statement? Can we ask questions? Can I ask her a question? Um, are we? Yeah, you can ask her. You can ask Miss Weaver a question. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. Miss Weaver. We're, we're going to call you back. I apologize. No, sorry, you made reference to some ecological reason that we should refuse it. Something about uh, water. 
uh, and I un understand that D um, there's an issue with Deal Lake um, and just the water table there. So, um, and it, I just don't want there to be more ecological problems. I know the lake is changing a little bit since I was there. It used to be a lot higher. You used to go ice skating on it. Um, but, you know, I think it's, I think there's some issues with water absorption um, in that area where I know we're in, um, where we live in Pittsburgh, they are very limited to where you, um, the, the, the housing density is really important because they want the, the land to be able to absorb it. And the, whatever the water is absorbed by the land, I think it goes into Deal Lake. And can we get our uh, experts here to talk about whether a two smaller structures or one larger structure would be more uh, of a strain on the water table or what? Well, it <coughs> You're, you're talking about the difference in impervious surface. Um, and because impervious surface on is, is just based on the area, whether it's two lots or one lot, you're, you're, uh, the ordinance allows the same amount of Im area of impervious surface. Um, any grading or plot plan that is submitted um, after the fact would be subject to the review of the township engineer. And the township engineer might require um, you know some stormwater management on the property to uh, um, alleviate any increase in, in stormwater runoff um, but that would be subject to you know his, his re review and approval so just to follow up so what you're saying is is that there's no greater impact on ecologic or water table or deal lake with one house or two houses because the ordinance treats the land the same whether it's one or two houses right Thank you. And I think, too, another issue is if you have the one larger lot with the larger home on it, the impervious might not be any difference except for the fact that you could have a 60-foot rear yard and uh, amenities such as a tennis court or a basketball court could be constructed on that larger lot, whereas on these smaller lots, it would be very difficult to do that. So I think that not only would that affect it in terms of the amount of and impervious coverage on the sites, but I think it would also affect, the, have an impact on the adjacent properties to the rear. Any other questions for Ms. Weaver? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Name, address, and then Mr. Lexstein will swear you in. Sure, Christina Stummer, 533 Mammoth Road. Yes, uh, can you just uh, spell your last name, please? S is in Sam, T is in Tom, U, M is in Mary, M is in Mary, E, R. And I'm sorry, your address again? 533 Monmouth Road. 533 Monmouth Road. It's just to the west. Okay, I'm sorry. And let me swear you in. Do you swear in testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing about the truth, self of God? Yes. And just, I'm sorry, I missed your first name. Christina. Christina. C R I S T I N A. No H. Thank you very no much. E. Go ahead. So, uh, authorized to ask questions? You can ask questions or give and or give a statement. Uh, can you please uh, tell me again what is the exhibit for the environmental impact assessment that was conducted? I believe that was sworn in as a or read in a, into evidence as an exhibit. No, we didn't. No, I don't think there was. Uh, there was an environmental commission report. Okay, so with regards that, that's from the town. Okay, so with regards to the environmental commission report, <coughs> um, what soil borings were done for the site? They don't. The, the environment. This is. These are comments from the township's environmental commission. Okay. So they. So they wouldn't have done soil borings for the town. For okay. The I site. didn't know whether or not the applicant. No, that's fine. No, it's a legitimate question. Oh, great. So, uh, what was the final recommendation with regards to the environmental commission um, associated with this subdivision? Let me environment. I can. Re I'll read it. It's not that long. This is a site tour and plan review for a residential property that seeks approval to subdivide the lot at 608 Wildwood Road into two lots and demolish the existing home. The lot has a reasonable number of trees along the side lot lines in the back. Each new lot would still maintain those trees. What? No, I'm, I'm talking to, I don't think uh, I have that going. But that's okay. I can listen okay. to you read. It's really not that long. In addition, the applicant plans are on installing three red oak trees along the street. One tree will be, the, will be exactly on the new property line between the new lots, and the others appear to be equidistant, equidistant from the borderline. Uh, a possible concern related to the location of the two outer trees of the three is that care must be exercised to locate them such that they will not make it difficult to lay out the new residences and driveways that will be constructed. 
They can still be installed to beautify the properties and street without being symmetrically installed. Care will have to be taken to, pre to be taken to protect these new trees and all of the existing on the two new properties during the future construction. That's the entire report. So um, there's a, an assumption in that report that existing trees on the property will remain even through proposed development plans? No. They Is that the uh, commission's they're assumption? Proposing, they're proposing to add trees, is what they said. What about the existing trees? The, the, there's no... The just so you know, the existing trees on the site would have to remain, if they're going to propose a development on the site, which they will, they would have to comply with the township's tree removal ordinance what's the township's tree remo remo removal ordinance per lot what per lot it's not per lot it's per tree okay so if, if i they remove a tree they have to replace it how many trees can you take down per lot per year for for a subdivision they can take down a number of trees but they have to replace them i think but the, the, most, there's no not, i don't think, think you're answered you're, a up. What, i think what you're asking is the, the tree removal ordinance allows single family homeowners to take down a certain number of trees per year without getting any kind of right. tree replacement. However, when it's in the context of construction, as many trees as would be in the footprint of construction can be removed as long as they are replaced. Right. So I'm just wondering with regards to two houses versus one house, we're talking about just dynamics. If it's two versus one, what are we talking about from a removal perspective? Ir irregardless of the dimensions, but just have, do we understand what that is? We're talking about preservation of the environment, the impact, tree removal obviously impacts flooding. We're at 533 Monmouth Road. We get flooded all the time in our backyard because we get all the downhill runoff, which would include this property um, for purposes of, of our flood control. And quite frankly, I think the property was probably wetlands before it was constructed, before the law came into place. So I'm asking the question with regards to tree removal, we we're talking about this one house versus two houses. What, what are we talking about footprint removal for purposes of trees? Did the Environmental Commission point that out at all in their I, I report? Read the entire letter. Yeah. yeah. And There's you can't tree. tell yeah. without having a plan in front of you to see what's going to be built, what the difference would be. Sure, but we're it's talking the, about, you know, let's, it, just, let's just hypothetically play this out. So uh, we have a hypothetical, which is already admitted to not maximizing the full 65%, okay? So this is actually, uh, I know a depiction, but not actually how big the footprint these buildings could be. Well, the, the, 65 the, the is building not footprint. For the building. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Do we have to, not to interrupt, but there's there's a rendering. Do you have the, a blown up version of this one <laughs> that shows the existing trees that would help show? And, and just to, to clarify, the 65 percent is the impervious coverage, no, not, the, not building. the building coverage. So, does the house take into consideration the impervious cover? Partially, but the 65 percent includes everything, like Mr. Higgins said, like. Tennis courts, swimming pools, pool sure. houses, uh, yeah. basketball courts. Subject to setback requirements. And the like. Okay. All right. Yes, so, but, so, but if I may, just because yeah. you said that the, the setback requirements for a tennis court or swimming pool is 10 feet, where the home is significantly more. Sure. So with larger backyards or a larger lot area, you can fit much larger accessory structures in there, which are allowed much closer setbacks. Sure. So I, and I, I'm assuming, um, for purposes of variance requirements, I just want to get back to the, the depictions. Um, this is a general depiction. Can, can you take the mic with you? It's sure. Portable. No, I'm just pointing out this is a general depiction. This is actual not a development plan, but when Correct. we're talking about the, the community, I guess you could say, for purposes of our neighborhood, that this these homes can actually be much bigger than what's depicted here. They could no. be, but they're much smaller than what could be there if it was kept as one lot. How many times has the township granted a variance on a building permit in the last two years for purposes of cutting back onto the setback requirements? We're, Just not, we're not asking for cutting back yeah. on setback I'm, I'm talking about, th this goes into what might be constructed there because you've made a big case trying to talk about the harmony of the community, so, the so to environment. Answer your, to answer your question, boards grant variances on setbacks all the time. Right, yeah. so. Like, so well, I would say like yeah. every single meeting. So this yeah. can actually be worse. No, no it could. I'm sorry. No, nope. <laughs> because so there, this, there are so guidelines a, this, for this that. This actually can be Could worse please, for the please community let me than what's presented. Explain to you because you're wrong. <laughs> I'm asking well, a question. Now, you're asking a question. I'm trying to answer you. Go ahead. Okay. There are laws that govern when setback requirements can be granted. Mm -hmm. One of those 
that would apply in a situation such as this is, is there a hardship? The hardship has to deal with the property, not with the person, not with the person's financial situation, has to deal with the shape of the property, the topography of the property, and if there's something about the property that would justify the granting of a variance, right. they could do it. However, since they're getting a variance for the size of the lot, they can't go for a hardship mm -hmm. because they're creating the smaller lot than the ordinance would permit. It's called the self-created hardship. Yep. They cannot get that type of variance. So what's the, the so from a, for purposes of even if for a hardship, since they're, they're creating this already, what's the time period you need to wait in order for that pre-approval or that hardship variance? There is variance? no end to that time period. So from, a, so from an cases, expiration standpoint, yeah. Yeah. There's no two-year, three-year waiting period. Once, once they create those non-conforming lots in perpetuity, they cannot get a hardship variance and have a, small, have a larger house. So what would be a situation where you would be able to grant a variance then? If the lot was created before a subdivision. Yeah. So let's yeah. say, for example, a lot of lots were created before the map filing law, before the municipal land use law, maybe many of these lots, and towns would lay out the plats mm -hmm and just record them, right. not go to a planning board, not get any approval. I'm just talking about these lots no, now, no, like I'm, if a new builder were to come. I'm trying, to, I'm yeah. trying to, to answer it. So in those situations, you have lots that were created by a municipality that are smaller than what they have rezoned the property. So you have a hardship because you have a lot that you can't fit what someone typically would be able to fit. It wasn't you or your predecessor in title who created that. So what Jim is explaining is, is that if you have an undersized lot that was created that way by the town, and then the town upzoned around you, then you have a hardship because you're pre-existing non-conforming lot. And, but, and I just want to correct Jim on one thing. Just because you have a hardship doesn't mean you're entitled to a variance. That's right. Because yeah. th there's case law that says some lots are so small or that the setbacks are, are so great that they're asking for that you can't develop it without a negative impact. So right. having a hardship is only step one. Yeah. You also still have to prove the negative criteria. So if, if you had a lot here that was 10 feet wide and you came in and you wanted to build a house that was 10 feet wide on it, and you said, but board, I have a hardship. You have to let me. The board doesn't have to let you because you have to also be able to demonstrate that it's not a negative impact. So Great. it, it, it I just want to just say thank you for that. But when the new people come, because you're, I know what's going to happen here, and they want to build this, please remember this testimony. Because then what we're anticipating is, is it just going to be just as worse as a, a, a huge, one huge property? No, they're not you're going to have two and a half. You're yeah, going to have, first off, you're going to have two and a half they're stories. They're not going to be able to do that. Hold, well, I, they're not going to be able to do that. There's going to be a condition in this approval that they have to conform to the, to the, to the setbacks to build the new houses. So they will never be able to come and ask for a variance with There's regard to changing? There's going to be a condition in this approval, okay. if the board grants the approval, yep. that, they, that they have to conform this house to the setbacks that exist on the property. Okay, so with regards to the, the tree planting situation and the amount of trees that could be removed <coughs> associated with the subdivision, that, what can we, what can we put separate. into the approval? That's something separate. There's nothing that's like a heritage tree or anything along those lines right. that's been identified your, on this property? Your ordinance governs that. So no, I know what the ordinance does, but I'm asking as conditions with regards to subdivisions, you have the wherewithal to be able to put in reasonable conditions associated with this. So is that not what our ordinance says with regards to granting these types of subdivisions? You can put, you have the power of the authority. Is there a tree on the site? I don't know. I, I'm asking for the co environmental commission uh, report. You read it. I, I, I they read looked the entire, at it. Ma'am, I read you the entire right. report. There is no mention. I didn't. I didn't. Pretend, I didn't skip a paragraph. No, I understand so that. So there's nothing in the environmental commission. Sometimes they have like tables or charts there, or things like you, that. I swear okay. to you on my life. Yeah. I read you every single word of the environmental commission report. There okay. is no mention of a heritage tree. There's no. There's no charts. There so is when no the nothing. chainsaws and come the, and I call you and the police, <laughs> I hope you all show up to make sure whoever is going to construct on here is actually complying with the permit conditions for takedown. That's all I have to say. Because whenever we call you guys with regards to violations, people don't show up and we have to call the police. All and right. what the worst so thing the is, that's all, changing the, the condition all. of this community, is the two and a half acre, um, the two and a half, the two hold and a half story uh, variance just, that you guys you are authorizing. Say, first of all, you've never called this board because this board doesn't have any enforcement No, I call, the, I, call the, I call the town all the time. Okay. And I but call you've the never, police. But you've never called. I'm just saying, I'll, you know what, Mark, I'll call you. 
Because you know what? I'm an attorney as well, just uh, like you are. But okay. I'm just going to say, let's ask him some questions. I'll call you next time, and let's see if they're coming into your neighborhood with regards right. to what they're doing here. Can, 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 can my my can testimony's concluded. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You know, Wait. You can't just make comments. <laughs> and say, I'm gonna, all these board members need to come out and hang out and stop them. Because one, this board doesn't have that type of power to do that type of thing, which if you're an attorney, you know that. So please do not make those type of accusations against the board when I'm you know full well as- You know, I'm not, I'm, you know I'm, I'm, I'm not being serious. I know you Hold don't have on. the power essentially to enforce Whoa. the requirements. I know excuse, we have me, to call excuse, the me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. We are way beyond asking questions about this application. Do my you have other questions? Nope, my testimony is completed. Thank, Thank you, you very much. That's what you want to do. That's fine. <laughs> Is there anyone else from the public who would like to make a comment or ask questions? Seeing no one, do I have a motion to close the public hearing? I make a motion to close the hearing. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <coughs> Board members, do we have any questions? Do we have any conversation we want to have about this before we move along? Have Mr. Plouis, did you get all your questions answered now? We're getting there. Okay. <laughs> well, speak now. <laughs> right. Well, we could just confirm all trees on the diagram are 12 inches or larger. So 12 Actually, inches. So a couple things. If I could, if I may, because I believe I'm entitled to a quick closing statement sure. before you deliberate. So I apologize. I didn't. I don't want to jump in. I never saw you get that heated, Mr. Plouis. So I just, I got a little scared. I wanted to just sit back here. Um couple of things the the trees that are shown on this drawing to confirm with Pat are six inches or greater which is what's required by the ordinance not 12 inches or greater correct secondly to address the comment that um, Ms. Stummer had um, the tree removal ordinance actually protects heritage trees so based on the size of the tree being removed indicates when how much you have to replant in order to address it and if a tree is greater than a certain amount, I believe that there's language in the tree ordinance that has you work to go around it as opposed to uh, take it down. But again, putting all of that aside, in this particular instance, I understand that the neighborhood has enjoyed a smaller house on a much larger lot for dating back into the 50s. But we have to look at what the zoning ordinance contemplates for here. And currently, what the lot that is there is almost two, so two times the size of the lot that this uh, district contemplates, whereas the lots we're proposing are less than 1,000 square feet each under what the ordinance <laughs> contemplates. So what we're proposing, while it may not be what the two neighbors who spoke necessarily want in their backyard or in their neighborhood, it is much more appropriate or a much better zoning alternative because it actually comes much closer to meeting your ordinance requirements. Uh, you heard the testimony from our professional planner and our engineer, but more importantly, because I know that the board really relies on Jim and Ben, you heard the testimony offered by your engineer and planner. While Ben didn't offer any opinion with regard to uh, the subdivision itself, he did indicate that the amount of impervious coverage and the amount of impact from stormwater runoff is the same, whether it's one lot or two lots. And most importantly, your professional planner offered you testimony that supported and substantiated everything that our planner said and even went a step further as to why this is a better zoning alternative. So uh, based on all of that, I believe that we've squarely met the proofs of the ordinance. Uh, I'm sorry, the squarely met the proofs of the statute and that we are proposing a plan that is more in keeping with the R4 contemplated development than leaving the 18,750 square foot lot to be developed to its max capacity under the zoning. And, and just to point the board in the right direction here, and I'm not telling you to approve the application or don't approve the application, but this application is not about preserving a house. It cannot be about preserving a house. It cannot be about preserving a lot because that's the way people have grown accustomed to it. That's not the way the law works. There are two variances here. They, you have a minimum lot area variance, which is the ordinance requires a minimum lot area of 10,000 square feet. They're proposing two lots. They're going to be 9,375 square feet. And the other uh, variance is minimum lot width, which is that the ordinance requires a minimum lot width of 90, 90 feet, the proposed lot width of both lots of 75. So the board needs to take those two variances and only those two variances into consideration and make a determination as to whether the positive and negative criteria have been met for those two issues. Um, it's not about trees. It's not about anything else. It's about 
those two variances and whether they and whether they're presenting a better zoning alternative or whether they're not. It is definitely not a hardship variance, so we're not going in the hardship direction, and they're not asking for hardship variance. And it's not about one larger house versus two smaller houses, it, correct? It, it isn't, no. Okay. Because it's not it's not about the house. Mr. Higgins, because it's something that rarely comes up, but I just want to make sure that we are addressing our heritage trees in our ordinance. Heritage trees are receive special protections because they are extremely rare, but there were none identified on this lot. There were none, and I know that the Environmental Commission, whoever at the Environmental Commission does the site inspections, looks for those types of things. If there was one, it would be pointed out. In fact, you'll be getting an application next month or the month after where I, I saw a heritage tree on the lot and I'm having the, the applicant redesign the application because of that. But that's not this application. That's not this that's application. Not. And, and I Mr. didn't notice that. And Mr. Palutis, let me just lot. correct myself and, and so that I'm not coming off incorrect. Yeah. Yeah. You can consider, as the applicant's asking you to, whether the much larger house, which could be built on this property, yeah. Would be better for the for the neighborhood than two two smaller houses would. That you can consider. I didn't want you to. I don't want you to think yeah. that's what I was saying. That you can't consider that. But it's not an either or. It's not an either or. It is in a, in, in a way, yeah. yes. Yeah. But, oh. but my, my point about the bigger house was that it's not about preserving the house that's there. That can't be how you're deciding. This no, case. it's about keeping the lot together or subdividing the lot. It's about what's better for zoning purposes. Yeah. You have to take the. But we're you being have, asked. You have to take the positive and negative criteria Correct. and decide and decide whether if this plot is the variances that are going to be granted here serve the interest are, are, that the community is going to be better served by granting the variances than to allow the plot to stay as it is and potentially have a house going as long as it as they could do by right and, and without it, having to come here. Yeah. And Mr. Palutis, just to address when, when you said it is about it. Um, by subdividing this, you're guaranteeing smaller houses. So that's really what it is. So no, it's possible that someone builds a cottage or it's possible that someone builds a 10,000 square foot house. But by leaving it one lot, there's the risk of the 10,000 square foot house in this neighborhood with the, with the basketball court and the tennis court. By subdividing it, you're ensuring that the houses will be appropriately sized for what the zoning con contemplates. That's really all that we were right. trying to state. Mr. Mamie? Yeah. Um, we had testimony from one of the witnesses that this may have been wetlands at one point. Can we confirm that this had never been uh, designated wetlands? It, it, whether it has or hasn't in the past, it is currently not designated wetlands or regulated. Okay. I just wanted to make that clear. Again, in this particular neighborhood, when you look at the GIS, it's not designated as wetlands. Is that correct? Correct. Is the, never been a professional all right, so, ma'am, we cannot have people speaking the, from the, the audience. The DEP GIS does not designate this as wetlands. Okay. Other questions, comments, thoughts? Someone want to make a motion for a resolution? I'll make a motion. I'll make All a right. positive motion to approve this. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right. So we have a positive resolution. We have a motion. We have a second. Mr. Lexington, can you remind us everything that is in this or just what the applicant is requesting? And there were some carve outs they had to do also. Well, the, the, it's going to be conditioned on the demolition having to take place. It's going to be a uh, condition on that no building permit may be issued unless the curb, the sidewalks, and the trees, the new trees are going to be in place. Um, I believe those are the only special the conditions. Condition that any future homeowner could not. Oh yeah, it has to conform. Variance. Right, it has to be conforming with with what is being proposed. Uh, they can't see the hardship any, variance. Any future development has to comply with the township shade tree, township tree replacement ordinance. Protection ordinance. Demolition of the current. Structure? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. And, okay. All right, Claire, can we have a roll call, please? Yes. Miss Kaplan. Yes. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Do we do we need a break or are we going to move right along? Good. Okay. All right. Hold on. <laughs> All right, our last application of the evening. 1414 Woodlock LLC, 1414 Woodlock Ave, Ocean 07712, Block 120, Lot 7, Zone R6. Give them a second. Are we ready? All right. This is Chairman Paul Fernicola on behalf of the applicant, 1414 Woodlock LLC. We have two witnesses tonight. The applicant is proposing to subdivide existing lot seven into two lots, 7.01, which would be the interior lot, 7.02, which would be the corner lot uh, on uh, North Wanamassa uh, Drive. And going through to the review letters, we would uh, stipulate that should the application be approved tonight, that a condition of the approval would be one, the removal on the shed, what is uh, proposed for a lot uh, 701, which would eliminate the one variance for that lot, and that lot would be a fully conforming lot. And then the second condition that we would stipulate to is that the demolition of the structures would take place prior to perfecting the subdivision uh, should, it, should it be granted. So with that, I would like to call our first witness. We let me hand. actually, Paul, let me please mark in the exhibits that I have. Exhibit A1 will be the application itself. Exhibit A2 will be the boundary and topographic survey. Exhibit A3 will be the minor subdivision plan. Exhibit A4 will be the soil log. Then we have the following. That's all I have from the applicant at this time. There may be more exhibits. Uh, on behalf of the board, we have uh, B1, which is board one, will be the board planner report. Exhibit B2 will be the board engineer report. Exhibit B3 will be the traffic safety report. Exhibit B4 will be the code enforcement report. Exhibit B5 will be the environmental commission report. Exhibit B6 will be the fire marshal report. And Exhibit B7 will be the Department of Public Works report. So that's all we have. And I'll, and I'll swear in. Do you swear any testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, self you God? Yes, sir. And just state your name, spell your last name for the record. Uh, John Beletza, B-U-L-E-T-Z-A. Okay. And you are a licensed engineer, state of New Jersey, correct? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Are you just testifying as an engineer? Are you also a planner? Yes. I'm also a planner, but just testifying as the engineer. Oh, of course not. <laughs> Sorry about that. Go ahead. <laughs> You're employed by Nelson Engineer. Yes. You previously testified as an expert before various uh, planning and zoning boards. That's all we need. We'll accept him as an expert. He's been here before, I think. So, have you inspected the subject property, John? Yes. And. Uh, did you prepare the minor subdivision plan of the subject property? Yes. And which is uh, A3. Did your office also prepare the survey of the property, A2? Yes. And did you also prepare the soil log uh, that's been marked as A4? Yes. And is the applicant proposing to subdivide lot 7 into two 5,000 square foot lots, proposed lot 7.01 and lot 7.02? Yes. And 7.02 would be the corner lot fronting North Wanamassa Drive. And proposed lot 701 would be the interior lot. Correct. Now, uh, 
uh, directing your attention to the survey, would you identify the existing dimensions in the lot area of the property? Uh, the lot area is 10,000 square feet. It's uh, f uh, 50 feet wide in an L-shaped and 150 feet long along uh, Woodlock Avenue. Are there existing improvements located on the subject property? Yeah, on the what's to be the uh, lot 7.02, there's a two-story frame dwelling that has a one-story section that's at the northern end of the lot. And there's also a one-and-a-half-story cottage uh, near the center of the existing uh, entire lot near the southern end of lot proposed lot 7.02. Well, as an existing shed on what would be the interior lot 7.01? Yes, the interior lot 7.01 has a shed that's to be removed to make it a fully conforming lot. And then based upon your proposed subdivision plan in 3, would you identify the dimensions of the proposed corner lot uh, 7.02? 7.02 uh, is 50 feet by 100 feet as well as 7.01. Both of them are the same size. With regard to the proposed corner lot 7.02, will the existing two-story dwelling fronting North Wanamassa Drive remain? Yes. And is your understanding that applicant is proposing to remove the existing conforming cottage or bungalow? And in addition, the applicant is proposing to remove the shed located on proposed lot 7.01? Correct. And does the proposed lot 7.01, the interior lot, it fully, does it fully comply with the R6 bulk requirements? Yes, the R6 zone, the interior lot fully complies as subdivided. And with regard to the proposed corner lot 7.02, are variance, variances required for minimum lot area and minimum lot width and frontage? Yep, uh, minimum lot width on a corner lot in R6 is required to be 100 feet wide and the new lot 7.02 is 50 feet wide and the lot area on lot 7.02 the corner lot uh, minimum lot area is 10,000 feet and the uh, new lot as subdivided is proposed to be 5,000 square feet in addition lot 7.02 the corner lot has one existing variance condition that's the front yard setback from the existing structure uh, and that is 14.1 feet, where 30 feet is required, and that variant exists, and there is no change proposed to that. Now, in your subdivision plan, the tax map is in the upper left corner. Yes. Did you review the dimensions of other corner lots, specifically whether other corner lots in the subject property's neighborhood were also 50 by 100 feet? Yes. Okay. And did you propose an exhibit for tonight's hearing entitled Undersized uh, Corner Lot Map? I have extra copies of this. Uh, please send to the. Uh, this will be Exhibit A5? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. It looks like you, you have some color coding in, in red. Can you, first of all, identify what you put up on the board as A5? So this is an exhibit that shows the existing undersized corner lots that just happened to show up on our key map. And all the lots in red, they are, are corner lots? Correct. And how many uh, corner sure. lots did you identify that were less than 100 by 100 and a minimum of 10,000 square feet? There's 20 of them identified, and I believe I missed one, which would make a total of 21. And how many total corner lots are in the, uh, the neighborhood depicted in A5? Maybe 25. So four are conforming and 21 are. So approximately 21 out of 25 corner lots are not conforming to the uh, to 100 by 100 uh, required dimension and 10,000 square foot minimum lot size. Yes. Correct? Are most of them uh, 50 by 100 as proposed for lot 7.02? Yes. From your review of the tax map, you are undersized 
corner lot map A5 and your familiarity with the neighborhood is a 50 by 100 foot corner lot in keeping with the nature of the neighborhood. Yes, in my opinion, it's a keeping character with the neighborhood. Is it consistent with the character of the neighborhood? Yes. I have no further questions for the, for the engineer. All right. So we'll have our engineer give his report and then board questions. Uh, my only comment in my report was about the demolition of the, the buildings, and that was already uh, discussed. Uh, so I don't have any other questions. Members of the board, questions for this witness? <coughs> I'm sorry, so there, there will be two lots, both 50 by 100? Correct. And why, why is it that, I mean, I, I'm not, maybe it was the intention of, of whoever made the zoning, but why are corner lots supposed to be larger than all the other lots uh, by, by, by twice? The, the corner lots are... Yeah. yeah. The answer is, but I, I, I can explain that one. Um, this zone was zoned R4 for many years, and I fought with the planning board and the governing body for years to try and get them to rezone the area because the vast majority of lots in the area were 5,000 square foot lots, and the zoning board kept getting applications that required variances because they were undersized lots, which required, which were entitled to hardship variances, which we discussed with the previous application. And <clears throat> there's actually one member of the public here today that remembers the arguments that we used to have about the R4 versus changing the zoning to be more compliant with the character of the area. And basically the, the compromise that was reached is that, was that there were a lot of the corner lots that were 10,000 square feet, 100 by 100 so that the zoning would be changed to recognize the fact that the interior lots were 50 by 100, but that many of the corner lots were 100 by 100, so that those 100 by 100 corner lots would remain and not be changed, so that the character of the area would remain the same. But there were a number of L-shaped corner lots in the area that were 10,000 square feet but had a 5,000 square foot corner lot and then the L shape, another 5,000 square foot corner lot. In fact, I was just looking at my uh, prior reports. In 2002, there was an application on Sunset in Edgemere, which is actually, Edge, Edgewood rather, which is shown on Mr. Belletz's map at the bottom where you see the south side of Edgewood of Sunset and the corner of Edgewood, which is lot three. That was actually subdivided by the planning board. It was an L-shaped lot that was subdivided, very similar to this situation. So basically, the, the intent was to maintain the existing 10,000 square foot corner lots and not allow them to be subdivided, but to recognize that the vast majority of lots in that zone were 5,000 square feet. That answer your question? Yeah, so have there been variances granted through the years for these corner lots? There haven't been that many of them that are L-shaped that came, came in, but the one that I do know of, the variance was granted. I think A5 really, you know, <clears throat> they have pictures yeah. worth a thousand words. I think, you know, the highlighting in red, the corner yeah. lots, 21 out of 25 speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now the question is whether any of those 5,000 square foot corner lots are actually attached to a 5,000 square foot interior lot and form the L-shape, and I don't know that for a fact. I'm, I'm pretty sure that most of them are just standalone lots, that they're not attached. Thank you. Other questions from the board? Great. Do any members of the public have questions for this witness? Statements will be at the end of the hearing. Hearing none, do you want to bring up your, your next witness? Thank you. I am. <laughs> do you swear in testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and the but the truth, self of God? I do. Can you just state your name for the record? 
My name is John Tykina, T is in Thomas, A I, K is in Kelly, I N is in Nicholas A. I'm a licensed planner in the state of New Jersey. Thank you, Mr. K. And and, and I've, I've seen him a million times in different places. So. <laughs> Please begin. Thank you. It's uh, nice to be back in Ocean Township. Okay, so have you inspected the subject property? Yes. Have you reviewed this uh, property survey as well as the proposed subdivision? Yes. Okay. Could you describe the application briefly to the board? Certainly. So we are seeking a minor subdivision of uh, lot 7 in um, block 120. Uh, as Mr. Higgins said, it is an L-shaped lot uh, that would provide for two uh, 5,000 square foot lots, one facing on Woodlock Avenue, one facing on North Wanamasa uh, Drive. Uh, we would have, we would retain the existing home that would be faced facing North Wanamasa, and we're proposing uh, a new lot on Woodlock Avenue that would uh, provide for a conforming uh, building lot there. Did you have an opportunity to review the uh, planning board's uh, review letter or review report, Mr. Higgins' report? Yes, I did, and I, conf I concur with Mr. Higgins' um, relief that was identified. There is a, a new variance for a minimum lot area for the corner lot, lot 7.01 is proposed at 5,000 square feet where uh, 10,000 square feet is required in the R6 district. Uh, we would also require minimum lot frontage uh, for that lot 7.01 that is in existing condition. Uh, and then finally we have a minimum front yard setback for lot 7.01 that again is in existing condition that the applicant is not proposing to change. Do you agree with Mr. Higgins that the removal of the shed on the proposal lot 7.02, the interior lot, would make that lot fully conforming? Yes, that is correct. Did you have an opportunity to review what's been marked tonight, A5, the uh, undersized corner lot map prepared by Nelson Engineer? Yes, I have, and, and I uh, prepared a similar uh, analysis, and my analysis was a uh, was uh, similar to um, uh, what the engineer came up with, uh, you know, including uh, the, the subdivided lot that Mr. Higgins uh, mentioned, uh, lot three at the corner of Edgewood and Sunset. Based upon your review of A5 as well as uh, the tax map, you agree that there are a significant number of non-conforming corner lots in the subject properties uh, neighborhood, the R6 zone. Yes, uh, at, at 21 out of 25 um, non-conforming lots, that is certainly uh, a large number of non-conformities. From your review of the various maps and survey and your familiarity with the neighborhood, is a 50 by 100 corner lot in keeping with uh, the nature and characteristic of the neighborhood? It is precisely what is provided for in the neighborhood. Um, the 50-foot lots uh, provide a nice rhythm along the street. Uh, they do tend to um, result in somewhat more modest homes, uh, and that is certainly in keeping uh, with the neighborhood. In your professional opinion, does the application satisfy the criteria under the municipal land use law for the issuance of the variances required for the proposed subdivision? Yes, it does. And would you please describe for the board the basis of your opinion? that it meets the criteria for the issuance of the variance approval tonight? Great, I finally get to run. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as the board knows, there's five uh, findings you need to, you need to make. Uh, one, it relates to a specific piece of property. Two, it advances some of the purposes of zoning. Uh, three, that in a C1 variance like the existing conditions that it does present a hardship uh, to provide compliance or a C2 variance situation, uh, which would be the 5,000 foot lot area. Um, that the benefits outweigh the detriments. Uh, and then finally, the negative criteria, you know, with all your variances, there's no substantial detriment to the public good, and there's no impairment uh, to the zone plan or the master plan. Uh, so as I said, the uh, existing conditions are all C1 variances. They are existing conditions that are not proposed to change. Uh, changing them would indeed be a hardship uh, for any applicant, um, and, and they exist largely on the existing uh, lot no matter what, whether it's 5,000 square feet or 10,000 square feet, those nonconformities remain. In terms of the, um, 
in terms of the uh, benefits outweighing the detriments for the 5,000 square foot lot, uh, in this instance, the operative case is Poland v. South Plainfield. Uh, when considering the balancing test, the board should consider uh, the overall benefit of the proposal, not just the benefit of the 5,000 foot lot, the individual relief. It, it really talks about what is the overall uh, Im improvement that is proposed. Uh, in terms of the positive criteria, uh, I'd submit to you that there are, uh, there are a few. Uh, purpose E, to promote the establishment of appropriate population densities um, and the preservation of the environment. G, to provide sufficient space in appropriate locations for a variety of uses in accordance with their respective environmental requirements in order to meet the needs of New Jersey citizens. And M, to encourage coordination of the various public and private procedures and activities shaping land development with a view towards lessening the cost of such development and to the more efficient use of the land. In terms of the project as a whole, of course, it advances uh, some of these purposes as of zoning as, as we set forth. This proposal, most importantly, will eliminate a prior nonconforming use on lot seven, having two principal residences. The proposed subdivision creating two separate lots with one being fully conforming and one containing the existing home represents a better planning alternative. Retention of the existing residence on North Wanamasa Drive uh, certainly maintains the streetscape character and the rhythm of the street along North Wanamasa uh, with Deal Lake being on the opposite side of the street. And the proposal is, is an efficient use of the land as the new home will share the infrastructure on the existing street uh, on Woodlock. In terms of the negative criteria, um, first, that there's no substantial detriment to the public good. Um, again, the proposed use is, com is compatible with the uses in the immediate vicinity and the surrounding area. This is a, a low impact single family home. It is not a noxious use with significant exterior impacts. It will be a, a fairly modest home on a uh, 50 foot wide lot. Um, the, the nice thing about uh, small, smaller houses as opposed to bigger houses, uh, bigger houses tend to come with more stuff. And uh, stuff out, you know, stuff makes noise, stuff is, is impact. Uh, and the smaller houses just have, have a little less of an impact than the neighborhood and we much more like uh, its surrounding neighbors. Uh, the proposed infill on the existing street will be consistent with the general aesthetic of the area and will not appear uh, overcrowded. And then finally, the proposed development is not anticipated to generate any substantial traffic. Uh, one additional house, uh, as, as one additional house, it's actually one house replacing one house. So uh, it's, it's literally two houses to two houses, uh, no impact at all there. In terms of uh, the, the final prong for the um, impairment of the zone plan or the master plan, uh, the proposed development will not cause substantial impairment uh, to the intent and purpose of the zoning ordinance for the R6, which is to provide for smaller lot sizes in conformance with existing conditions in specific areas of the town. And then finally, it promotes the master plan objectives for future development. Number one, recognize existing development patterns in the township are largely established and ensure that future development does not conflict with those existing development patterns. So as we showed uh, on A5, um, this uh, proposed development pattern is exactly consistent uh, with what exists in the blocks that, that surround us. Um, it is certainly uh, in consideration of in reasonable character for the built environment that's there. And then finally, your, your 2023 master plan, and this was a uh, talk about pulling, it, pulling out an Easter egg for a planner. Uh, the 2023 master plan recognizes the established development and in addition providing to providing some sensible recommendations for accommodating modern living on all residential districts makes specific recommendations for this area east of, Wood, uh, east of Woodlock Avenue in recommending an R6A zone for this unique area. The area is unique in lot sizes that are smaller than the balance of the R6 zone. Most of them are 40 feet wide and this portion of, of that, they are 50 feet wide. And any proposed development on these lots requires bulk variances from the zoning board, end quote. So I'd note the text uh, states Camp Avenue is the boundary. Uh, fortunately, the map uh, has Woodlock Avenue as the boundary for the proposed R6A district. Um, so I think that uh, looking at uh, particularly on, uh, on A5, um, the number of nonconforming lots uh, that are both east and west of Woodlock Avenue uh, that boundary is certainly consistent, it, and, it, and if the governing body and the planning board, when you put it together, when you put that ordinance together, if you chose to 
shift that R six A another block or two west, uh, you would be uh, doing a good service uh, for what is predominantly five thousand uh, foot lots uh, in and throughout that area. So, in this instance, we are uh, implementing. Uh, one of the recommendations of the master plan, and we are in no way uh, impairing the intent of that plan. Um, so I, uh, I'm not going to talk about the, whether it's street lines or lot li or lot lines. Um, so for those reasons, I think the board has the ability to grant the relief requested and make the requisite findings. And I'm available for your questions. Mr. Higgins, uh, no, I, I basically, for first of all, I want to clarify one thing in my report which Mark was nice enough to point out, is I transposed <laughs> lot 701 and 702 in my report. Just, that's just for the record. It doesn't really make that much difference. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I, I think the, uh, as far for planning reasons, I think that the application is eliminating a use, non-conforming use, where you have two residences on one lot, and they're actually squeezed pretty close together. Uh, ben and I had met with the applicant's representatives quite a while ago and went over the situation and we suggested that they remove that bungalow and do a lot that was a little, made a little bit more sense in terms of the configuration of the lots. But they're, they're, so they're eliminating a non-conforming use, which is the two lots, two houses on one lot, and creating two separate lots, each with a single family residence on it. So I think that's, that's something the board can consider. But I basically agree with the testimony. Hmm? Can I ask can I ask a question? Um, hmm. Lot 30. What, what's happening with Lot 30? Yes. Is that staying with with uh, with Lot 7.02? It stay with 7.01 actually the, with the corner lot. Yeah, 7.01. Yeah, because I transposed them. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, so yeah, no, the yeah, existing yeah. residence is on 7.02. 7 yeah, the existing home is on 7.02. Right. Yes. Can I ask a clarification? Is that the one on facing North Wanamasa Drive? Yes. Yeah, yeah that is okay. what we're referring to as the court. So I'm um, 7.02. I just want to make sure for the record that that, that lot is not going to be associated with the, with the new lot. It's going to be associated with the existing residence. Yes, 7.02. Okay. Any other questions on the board? Wait, I'm sorry, there are both houses occupied now, or the ones in the smaller cottage that's not occupied? I don't. I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think that it is occupied right now. But I'm not 100% sure, Mr. Edis. But even if it's not occupied, yeah, I didn't, I didn't. it still exists as a residence. Mm -hmm. the, the basically, been Mark can jump in any time on this. But the law is, in order to abandon a use, you have to both have an intent to do it and an action to do it, both of those. So even if it's not occupied, it doesn't necessarily mean it's abandoned. Right. It's mere not use is an abandoned use. Yeah. yeah. Other questions? Do we have questions for the witness from the public? Seeing none. That includes the testimony from that. Okay. Do, do you have a closing? Yeah, I think the, uh, you have to open to the public. Um, I, oh, oh, sorry, these questions. Yeah. Open to the public for any statements that you'd like to make. Yeah. Please come to the microphone. Um, state your name, address. Mr. Lexington will swear you in. Thank you. Hello. I'm Deborah Hunter. All right. And I'm at 14. Let's just, let's just swear you, I'll swear you in oh. first. Do you swear your testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, self you got? I do. Okay. Yeah. And Deborah, if you just spell your first name, because I know there are multiple ways to spell Deborah. Right. D E B O R A H. <laughs> Hunter, H-U-N-T-E-R. Thank you. And what's I your address? 1402 North Monomassa Drive. North Monomassa Drive. All right, go ahead. I live in one of those little lots. Um, I just wanted to bring up a couple of things you asked. Is it livable? Is it anybody in it right now? No, no one is in it. It is not safe. And you keep calling it a cottage. It is an overgrown garage. So my concern would be that I'm, first of all, let me just say, I'm for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been living there for 13 years at this point, and um, I always thought there was a house on that lot and that somebody was living in it. Um, but uh, as of about, I don't know, a few years ago, um, I was able to walk through it. It's not safe. I want it to come down. I'm excited that this is going to be broken into another little 
lot for another house to come in. And that's all I just really wanted to say. After what you listened to the last time, I'm easy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else from the public? All right. Hearing none, do I have a motion to close public hearing? I'll move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I did. Yeah. yeah, second. I second. Yeah, yeah. All right. Any any discussion? Any questions? I, I just have a question maybe for our engineer. When you went out there um, to the site, the other home next to it, um, I think 1410. Is it? Is that? Are you talking about the, the bungalow or the. No, no, no. The, the home next to it okay. uh, with the so. blue door when I was by there earlier today. Is it. I guess how close is that to the property line? And no, it has nothing to do. I'm just out of curiosity. Like, is that? I, I don't know how close it is to the property line. Okay, I just thought it was, a, but I just wanted to. It's permitted my, to be five feet. Five feet is. So you're permitted to be, but I don't know what it is. Okay, all right. That's a I, when I was by there, it just looked a little close, but I just wasn't. I didn't measure. I was wasn't looking at it, and I just was walking by. But that's all I had. I have no concerns with it. Quick question: Are we looking at the um, property across the street? Uh, I, I, yes, I can answer that. That's a across so the street. This is across the street. So I can't see it. Sorry. The, so it's opposite side. So it's just what's the point of showing us? Th this? That was from the environmental commission report, Mr. Monty, and I I don't want to speak for Mr. Colton, but I believe it was to show that there are other similar lots in the area of the equal size. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, that's statement in the in the report that um, in driving around it's obvious the statement is true in the prior statement the applicant claims 50 by 100 lot is keeping with the nature of the neighborhood thank you yeah. anything else all right someone want to make a, a resolution I'll make a resolution okay. a positive or a positive. negative positive resolution do we have a second I'll second Ooh, we got a uh, sorry I heard Eric first <laughs> <laughs> all right Roll call, please. Cecilia? Yes. Catherine? Yes. 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 For what, 40 years, Tom? 30. 30, 30 years. <laughs> up until about five years ago. That's right. What's that doing? <laughs> he graced us with his presence. <laughs> <laughs> he was one of the guys I argued with about changing the zone. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. The motion to adjourn. Mr. Palut is second. Second. Second from Mr. Adis. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.